You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. What really creates a successful online program? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And over the last 25 years in marketing and business, I've helped many brands to launch, scale and grow with some of them becoming multi-billion dollar companies. I'm here to inspire you to get out of your own way and create a profitable, fulfilling business while living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. So I bring you She's the Business Podcast, a unique blend of strategies, tactics, mindset, health and spirituality, literally everything you need to be the successful leader of your dream business. Made by women for women, this is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Now, why are online programs so popular? It seems like everybody these days has an online program, right? Uh, Including yours truly. Yes, I know. And that's probably why I decided to have this conversation today because online programs are something that I've been doing. Online products, if you want to call them that, courses, memberships, group coaching programs, even one-to-one coaching. Um, I do everything online in my business and have done so for many, many years. In fact, I run an online business purely online ever since 2010. So I've tried it all. Basically, I, I know what it's like to sell these types of offerings. And it is something that is very popular because when we think online, we generally are thinking about more freedom, more flexibility. Those are usually the two reasons why people are wanting to go online is is simply to have that freedom of being able to do it from the comfort of your own home, not having to have a premises, not needing to potentially um, have that face-to-face interaction, which I know that we definitely love a bit of face-to-face. I'm not saying that face-to-face doesn't have a place and it certainly does, but online can be a lot easier. There's also other benefits. You may have been restricted to local clients previously if you didn't have your business online or, or offering online services. Once you've taken it into that online space, well, your location sort of really stretches to as far as you want it to stretch. Maybe it's global, maybe it's within your your state within your country, the actual geographical borders stop being a barrier to your growth, right? So definitely plenty of reasons why you might want to go online, why it might seem like a really smart option for your business. But there are some key mistakes that I see a lot of people making when they're attempting to bring an online program into their business, whether they're starting a business right from the beginning and just wanting to start an online business and have an online offering, or if they've got an existing business, maybe you have a bricks and mortar or something that you're offering face-to-face services and you're wanting to take that online. It is commonly the same type of problems that people come up against. The first thing that I see a big mistake people making with their offerings is just really trying to include too much, overwhelming their clients. And this is something more common, I would say, in programs such as memberships and courses, where to have this seem like there's more value and there's more in it and this is so amazing, there's this natural tendency to think that more is better, you know, add more, it's better. And this is, I think, when I think about it, it's probably inbuilt in our brains purely because of the world that we're living in, you know, where it's like people started to think, well, I'm getting more value for money when the meal that I'm served is bigger. And so this whole bigger is better mentality has been present in our culture and society for a long time now. And you tend to just then apply it to your online program, like more is better, except more often means overwhelm, confusion, complexity, people feeling like they're not able to finish it. And when they don't finish it, they don't feel successful. So this is a real one to look out for, probably one of the most hidden barriers, I think, to to really finding success with your online program is actually trying to stuff it with too much good stuff. (laughs) It's like, save it, save it for a different one, save it for later. You don't have to put everything you have into your online program. And, um, and trust me, I've, I've experimented. I have done that. You know, I've had programs where 
I really tried to over deliver. And instead of it having the effect of it being amazing, it actually was at the, you know, the feedback was, well, I'm feeling like I'm not able to do all of the things because there's so much in there. I don't have time for it. And therefore they were feeling they were getting less value because they weren't being able to utilize all the things that I was providing. So lesson learned for me, I hope that that is really useful for you as well to consider when you think about it, when you're offered a program and it's not about actually, well, I want something where there's more things for me to do. I don't know if anybody's thinking that. We're probably thinking, I want this outcome. You know, what is the program? How's it going to help me get there? You know, we first, we lean in because the outcome is right. And I spoke about this in my episode last week. Go and have a listen if you haven't yet, because I was talking about what makes an offer actually a winning offer and how to to find out that you've got problems with your offer. Usually it's where you're focused on outputs instead of outcomes. So we want to switch from outputs to outcomes. That's one of the first keys. That's what, um, you know, what I've taught in Business Jam for years now, and it's amazing the differences can make instantly to your offerings. And yes, with online programs, this is absolutely critical. You know, don't think that the value is in your outputs or what's in the inclusions. It's not. It's actually in the outcomes that you help them get. And we all want it faster easier (laughs) with less effort. We want the outcome. We want the better outcome. We want to have less effort to get there. That is just human nature, right? We're always looking for the easiest way. So having too much included, definitely one of the biggest mistakes to have success with your online program. Now, the second mistake I see a lot of people making is not matching their sales system to the actual type of offering that they have. You might think, well, what on earth do you mean by that? Good question. Looking at what it is that your online program is and having this right sales system to match it. So for example, if your online program is a really low ticket, high volume course or workshop, you probably don't want to be doing one-to-one sales calls, discovery calls in order to sell it because that would be a huge high cost effort to actually make that sale. And when you put a value into your time of having those calls, then that may not be a profitable offer. So having a sales system that is designed to suit your type of program is essential to having success with that program. And there are many different ways you can look at it. You know, some people like to have an evergreen program. Other people like to have, you know, set cohorts, start dates, end dates. Um, And there are lots of decisions to make around what is the right fit for your business. So there are many different factors that we look at in terms of determining what is the right fit for your business. And, you know, having that right fit is one of the three critical ingredients that I teach about how you design the right program for your business. So the sales system, yes, there are many different types that you can implement and choosing the right one is is definitely going to impact the ability to succeed with your online program. The third mistake, so I like to have three, usually it's threes, is that they haven't done their numbers. Now, when we're looking at online programs, most of them are going to be one-to-many offerings. And, you know, the benefit of a one-to-many offering is usually like, wow, I can operate this program and I can have multiple people buy it. And so you're having less of your time and usually less of a limit in terms of how many clients you can take on. So depending on how you're designing that program, of course, but it is a numbers game. And what most people don't do is actually work out how many people they're going to need to have coming into their world in order to make the sales numbers, the revenue and the profit that they would like to achieve from their business. So doing the math is really important. Now, that's because most people will design their pricing and their offering based on what they think people will buy, based on what other people are doing out there in the market. And you might try to be price competitive and have a lower price and think, well, I think people will buy this number. You know, I'm just going to pick a number out of the air and come out with that one. Now, that's fine to do that. But once you've picked that number out of the air, then you need to do the math. How is this actually going to look from a business perspective? Is it doable? Is it viable? Does it work for you with your business right now? And if you're modeling your program offering of somebody who's got a completely different business, you know, if they've been in business for a long time, got a giant audience, it may be very viable for them to have a low ticket, high volume offering because 
They've got the volume there. They've got the people. They're already in their world. Super easy for them to launch and have success with that. Whereas if you're a brand new business and or you really just haven't paid attention to investing and building an audience yet and you've got a limited amount of people on your email list or in your social media audience who could be potential buyers for it, then you're going to have a real struggle getting the numbers that you need for a low cost, high volume model, which means that you're going to be looking at two things. You can invest more time in growing that audience and reaching the people that you need, or you're going to invest money in doing it, which may be ads, essentially. You know, how do you reach more people in, in less amount of time without doing all of that heavy lifting yourself? Well, you can pay someone else to do it. You can pay Facebook, Google, YouTube, any of those options, TikTok, you know, they all have ad solutions there. You can pay for ads to reach those people without having the effort on your part. So it's time or money. And that is important, right? Do you have the time and money or funds in order to do that? And when you do the math, you'll be able to see really quickly whether this is the right option for you right now. Is the online program that you're considering at that price point, is that going to be the right fit for your business now? Does something else need to change to make it viable? (laughs) And usually, If you are new in business or if you haven't got that audience or you haven't got the financial buffer in order to just be able to invest freely, then what I would say generally, and this is the way that we often look at it within Business Jam is get your one-to-one really profitable first, have a really great profitable foundation through your one-to-one because it's so much easier to have one two, three people say yes to something than it is to have 300 people saying yes. It takes the same amount of your time and effort to basically craft your offer, pick the pricing, do the strategy, all of that, no matter what the price is. But it takes so much more time to build the marketing required for a volume-based product the messaging, the sales pages, the funnels that you might have to do, the promotion, all of that is tenfold when you need so many more people to be able to see it and to come through and say yes. So it is a huge amount of investment and that's why it is often really smart to think about, well, what could I do actually with my one-to-one in order to be able to create a platform from which I could launch my one-to-many program? The reason why I love doing it this way around is not only just because of what I mentioned to you, the the math, it's just so much easier to have a few yeses that are higher ticket sales, you know, and takes you much less time. But there are other reasons for it as well. When you've developed this exact offering as a one-to-one, you get a chance to test your delivery, to test, you know, am I getting them the outcome that they're really wanting? What does this look like? Is it working? You can really fine tune it to be a solid offering as a one-to-one before you turn it into a one-to-many. So that is brilliant. It also gives you the opportunity to build an audience, you know, and you'll be able to build that audience without investing in ads if you don't want to. You know, of course, that option's always there. Ads are an amplifier, but it's not a replacement for your organic marketing. You should always have an organic marketing strategy in place first. You can add ads to help amplify it if you want to turn up the volume, but simply through focusing on, you know, creating a much more profitable one-to-one offering first and really building that profitable foundation that gives you time and ability to scale from first means that you'll organically build an audience. And when that one-to-one is essentially what you're creating is what you're going to be able to turn into your group offering. It means that you're building an audience of the right people. Fantastic. So we're ticking these boxes. We're almost already there. The third you know, reason for it, which I kind of alluded to, is that when you build that one-to-one really profitable offering first and have that foundation, it actually gives you a really decent buffer because when you do your one-to-one in the way that I like to teach you inside Business Jam, which is, you know, to have something that is not time for money. We're not trading time for money here. It is to look at how you're going to offer your services in a way that is profitable, detached from the amount of time that you're putting in. It's really well aligned to the goals that your ideal client wants and really outcome driven. 
it gives you a, a profitable service offering that is not going to be using all your time. So it comes down to building that buffer in the bank account, which means that you're potentially able to you know, maybe step back slightly, take on slightly less one-to-one clients, give yourself more time to develop your one-to-many and, and get it out there in the world. But it gives you the money to be able to invest as well, which is so important. It is not a shortcut to success, creating a, a high volume, you know, one-to-many offering. Uh, and I know that so many people kind of get blinded by the success that they're seeing out there. They see some big entrepreneurs with lots and lots of experience and huge audiences. They look at the programs they have and go, well, if I do the same as them, I'm going to have the same success. Like, yeah, but they probably didn't start out with that. And in order to build that, you can, and you can absolutely do that. It's just going to take a long time, especially if you're starting with nothing. It's either going to take a lot of time or a lot of money. So do you have either one of those to invest If you do, fantastic. Maybe that is going to be the right choice for you. But for most people who I work with, people who who are parents, they're busy mums, you've got a life that you want to be living, you maybe don't want to invest all of your savings right up front into a business, you want to be getting some earning happening sooner, you know, we might want to have some revenue and profit coming in this month. Great. Well, going down that pathway of building that you know, really high volume, low ticket, one to many offering is not going to be the answer for, you know, next month. (laughs) That's, that is a long tail strategy. And, you know, I'm not saying anything against it because I've got an online course called Business Jam. It is a, let's say course with inverted commas, because really it's a online program with some coaching and it's set up in a lovely course format, which makes it easy for you to follow. I have one myself, but that wasn't my first thing that I did straight out of the gate in the business. You know, I got to success much faster and easier with one-to-one, was able to really test the process, refine it, make it digestible as a one-to-many offering so that people in my program, now that I have Business Jam, I can get the same success, the same outcome doing it in that way as they would doing working with me in a one-to-one environment, right? It's just a different way of working and different people suit different things. You know, not everybody is the same. And I think that's actually the the last point I wanted to make was it's so important to get really clear on who your ideal client is for your online program. So if you want to have success with an online program, your ideal client may not be the same person. In fact, they probably aren't the same person who would be taking your in face-to-face offering. And just to give you an example of this, one of my recent um, Business Jam members, Jo is an energy healer. She's an intuitive channel, has been doing face-to-face energy healing for a long, long time, really successful in doing that. Beautiful results, amazing clients. And for a long time, she'd been trying to sell this as an online offering as well. And she's just like, I'm having no luck with it. And one of the critical first things that I helped her see is like, well, actually your client for your online version of this is not the same person who's doing your face-to-face and diving in and really getting clear on what is the online version of my ideal client actually look like? What are their priorities? What are they really wanting? Helped her to instantly do a few changes and tweaks, put out that offering as an online service and have somebody on the other side of the world find her book and pay. So it's not that her online offering wasn't any good. It was just that she was trying to pitch it to the wrong people and there was a lack of alignment happening there. So that is really, really important to get clear on. And obviously you you know that, right? People aren't going to buy something that's not the right fit for them. So if you're trying to sell something to the wrong people, they're not going to be saying yes. We need to be really finely tuned on who is the right fit for this so that you're speaking to the right people. Once you're doing that, then the sales come easily. You actually don't need anything complicated. She put it up on her website. Somebody found her organically by themselves, booked and paid, done. (laughs) Like it can be that simple. Literally it happens. So there you have it. There is the things that from my perspective, could either make or break you in terms of offering an online program. So we went through the top mistakes I see people making so that you know how to avoid those. And really the the things that you, that I 
like to say in my firmly held opinion is the fastest way to have a successful online program is building it out as a one-to-one offering first getting that great platform and foundation in order to be able to launch your your one-to-many from and also getting super clear on who your ideal client is as well because that is absolutely essential and there you have it so i hope you've enjoyed this today if you're wanting to learn more about it you know what are the keys to attracting the right clients how do i have a successful online program or you might like to take a look at some of the free training i have available on my website and dive in i love to provide that because as you can tell i love to teach i love to help people and you know my real purpose in having this podcast in having my business in doing what i do here instead of being back in my corporate job and career that i had for over 20 years which i did love but to be honest, I love this more. It is just being able to help more women really see the value that they have to offer and help them bring it to life, help them actually put that value out into the world in a way that, you know, they are being able to have a business that is really profitable in the hours that they want to be working. And that is truly by being able to step into their true value. And I think that it's beautiful when you can see the impact that they're able to make in the world simply because they're able to recognize what it is and bring that value out and provide it in a way that suits their ideal client as well. So that's enough from me. I will be back again next week with another episode. Can't wait to chat to you then. Have an amazing week and I'll see you soon. Do you know something? There are so many people that are overcomplicating their marketing, which means that they're running on the marketing treadmill, pumping out so much content, but still not yielding those results, meaning there are no clients actually signing up. Like what use is an audience if they're not an audience of buyers? What use is it creating great content to share if the people who are reading it have no desire to take that next step? to actually working with you. Well, if any of those things are happening for you right now, then it's highly likely that you're simply missing a key in your marketing strategy. And those keys are really simple. There are just five of them. And it's about how you align them, put them together. That is the simplicity that makes everything work just like clockwork so that you have a consistent stream of what you would consider your dream clients literally turning up in your inbox ready to have a conversation ready to sign up with you without you going out there to find them so let's put an end to cold outreach let's put an end to searching for clients in facebook groups let's put an end to just waiting around and relying on referrals to come through from other people because when you have that consistent stream of clients then you're in the place of being able to choose you've got an abundance of opportunity out there and all we need to do is turn on the tap for your clients to find you so i've created a brand new training and it's called five keys to clients on tap so you can guess what it's about can't you well this one hour short training takes you through those five critical keys that you need to have in your business so that you do have clients on tap and not just any old client, the ones that you most want to be working with, that are going to make you profitable, that are going to fulfill you, are going to make you feel like jumping out of bed every morning because you love your business so much. So you want in? All you need to do is head to jessicaosborne.com slash TMF for the magnetic formula. So TMF and get yourself into the next session that's running for this training. You honestly will not regret it. It is going to change your business, your life, if you've been experiencing any of those problems I mentioned before. Look forward to seeing you in there and let's do this.